Good evening and welcome back to the Rory Talks Football channel, your daily Arsenal news updates, debates and my opinions. If you're new to the channel, please do subscribe and uh, leave a like on the video as well. It does massively help me out. Um, good evening to everyone. I hope you're all doing well. Lots of you in the chat already. Uh, Pekka, hyper protagonist, Ross Lorman, George Christodoulou, VDV Vlad, Pekka, Ethan Udall, PV, Tantego, Carter, Sam, uh, John Emerson, Ethan Udall as well. It is good to see you. Um, obviously, look, we've got to address the elephant in the room. And um, and that is how bad Arsenal are. It's, it's the embarrassment. The embarrassment of the Arsenal performance yesterday. To turn up to the treble winners, to a team that haven't lost at home since 2022, and to play so defensively, it's embarrassing. And, um, you know, I think we should be ashamed. I think we should be ashamed. Um, Drax, Leith, Maddie, Tom, Fizzy, Smithy, Max, Icarus, good to see you all. Uh, Hannah as well, um, but yeah, I can't. I can't believe it. I can't believe the the just the conversations I've had to have that I've had today. Um, it feels like April Fools. It feels like April Fools. Um, the way that people have been going on, it's absolutely unbelievable. Um, good to see you finally made a stream. Appreciate everyone that joins the streams. Appreciate everyone that watches the streams back as well. Um, it, it, uh, it's greatly appreciated. But yeah, I just, it's baffling. It's baffling. Um, I don't understand how we were meant to have really appeased people yesterday. If we'd gone and played the way that they think they want us to play, to have played, as in we go there, we attack them, we're aggressive. Um, Rory, I assume your TikTok about the XG was April Fool's? Yeah, it was April Fool's. It was April Fool's. Um, yeah, if, if we'd gone and played the way they wanted us to and we'd lost, they would have mocked us relentlessly. It would have been, Arteta's got no plan B, Arteta's naive, the players haven't got the the what well, you know the mentality in a big game. Um it you know, it would have been they've bottled it and, and all of this. Um so instead we go there, we play pragmatic football, we get a result. It's not as good as it could have been. Um, but we get a result that keeps us definitely within the title race. Uh, and of course, that's that's horrific. And we should have been braver. Um, even though the day before, I was getting absolutely abused for putting out a combined 11, which had six Arsenal players and five City players. Um, apparently, it should have only had one or two Arsenal players. So we've got a far inferior team. Uh, but we should have gone there and played them off the park and smashed them. And by the way, even if even if somehow we had turned up and played aggressive, attacking, free-flowing football, and then we'd beaten them 3-0, do you know what the narrative would have been? Ah, oh, City have fallen off this year. City aren't the same this year. City only had one of their normal back five. So, you know, it's, there's no way of winning. There is simply no way of winning. Um, and you look at the way that Liverpool were praised to the heavens for drawing against City at home. And yeah, I think they outplayed City when they were at home. But for us to go there and get a point, I just, and, and get criticised for it, it's unbelievable. Thoughts on Saka in the big games? Because he had one good game against the top three sides of this season. Um, uh, it's not a conversation I want to have yet. It's definitely not a conversation I want to have yet. Especially because yesterday, I actually thought defensively he was fantastic. He did everything he needed to from a defensive standpoint. And I think he's not fit, is the honest truth. I think, you know, I, I genuinely don't think he's fit at the moment. Um, so I don't I don't want to talk, talk about that yet. Um, George Christodoulou said, I'm really, really proud of the boys. Yes, I think we should have gone for it slightly more because uh, they were there for the taking, but credit to Arteta and the boys. And this is the thing. And also, right, the, the plan was, and I think Arteta has said this basically, uh, or Saliba actually, I think, said it, we wanted to win, but we knew we couldn't lose. And so people say, oh, you played for a draw. I don't think we did play for a draw. I don't think we played for a draw. I think we played not to lose. I think we played in a way that made sure no matter what, we were coming away with at least a point. And if it had gone perfectly, we would have won. And there were two big chances in the game where we could have won that game that were arguably better chances 
than the one that Martinelli scored in the home leg, where we actually played in quite a similar way. We had a bit more possession in the home game, but we didn't play all that differently. Um, and the two chances were the, the ball across from Saka that Jesus, in my opinion, should get on the end of. He tries to run in front of Akanji to win the ball, and he should have peeled off the back of Akanji to win the ball. Um, which is just, you know, I don't think he has that elite striker instinct, unfortunately. And that's where we talk about signing new strikers. Um, and then the other one was in, in you know, the 85th minute around that moment when uh, we broke and Trossard really should have had his head up and should have played it across to Martinelli. Now, it's not an easy chance. The ball has to be just right. They're recovering defenders. Martinelli has to put it away. Um, but that was definitely what should have happened there, and it shouldn't have been Trossard taking it on and eventually shooting. So there were opportunities for us. I would argue we had better opportunities in that game than Man City did. So clearly, from a tactical perspective, that that that's you've done what you were meant to do. The team did what they were meant to do, and I think they admitted that they were probably deeper in the second half than they wanted to be. Um, but, you know, it is what it is. It is what it is. I just, I think it's unbelievable that we've been criticised. Um, why did Arteta bring Trostard on first, not Nelly first? I would assume Martinelli couldn't play more than the number of minutes that he did. In fact, honestly, I reckon the plan going into the game was that Martinelli wasn't going to play. And it got to that final 10 minutes at nil-nil, and Arteta thought, fuck it, we'll give it a go. Um, but I, I assume he couldn't have played more than that. Yeah, Ross Lorman's bang on. Criticised for decades for having no plan B, and now we have a plan A, B, and C. We're too negative. Make it make sense. And this is the thing. People are suddenly now talking as if Arsenal are a park-the-bus team, as if we haven't scored more goals than any team in the Premier League this season. Um, it's absolutely remarkable. Absolutely remarkable. And they also talk as if, historically, like, oh, you know, the way they talk about it compared to Liverpool, as if Liverpool have always gone to the Etihad and really given it a good go and, and and well, first of all, beaten Liverpool, which they, uh, City at the Etihad, which they've they've not done. Or I think they did it in 2016. They've not done it since. Their last eight visits to the Etihad, they drew four, lost four, didn't keep any clean sheets. And it's like, you know, what what more do you want? What more do you want? It's bizarre. And if we had taken all six points, I don't think Guardiola's ever taken six points off Klopp. Um, and I think Klopp took six points off Guardiola in Guardiola's first season. But that was about it. Tom, good to see you. Gjokeresh or an injuryless Isaac? Oh, God. I don't know. I don't know. There hasn't been uh, enough noise around how City haven't scored against us at all and haven't had any open play shots on target. This is the thing. How incredible is it? How incredible is it that Arsenal are getting more negativity than City, than the treble holders, than the 115 charges that have built a super team who haven't scored against us home or away. Uh, it's unbelievable. They've had, yeah, Like you said, they've had one shot on target in each game and both were from set pieces. And it's, I don't know. I don't know. I'm, I'm genuinely, this is, this is what, like, I know agendas are going to agend and people are always going to find a way to criticize Arsenal. But this is one where I'm just like, I can't believe it. I can't believe it. And it just goes to show, it just goes to show that at no point will we ever be able to have reasonable conversations when it comes to Arsenal. Because there's just such a large group that absolutely hate Arsenal, hate Arteta, and hate everything that we're doing. And it all comes from the fact, or, or a lot of it comes from the fact, that when social media football conversations started, when really when, when YouTube fan channels grew, and when football Twitter grew, and all the rest of it, Arsenal, pretty much are the, of all of the big teams, Arsenal are the only ones that have consistently been the banter club have consistently been the club that no matter how bad your team's doing, you can always hit Arsenal with a stick. You can always hit them. And and they don't know how to handle the fact that we aren't that team anymore. They have no idea how to deal with the fact that there's very little that you can shit talk Arsenal about anymore. Um, it's, uh, it's frustrating. Uh, Ismail says, what do you think? Uh, what do you think? What do you think can we win the Premier League? Oh, sorry. What do you think can we win the Premier League? Yeah, we can win the Premier League. Of course we can. 
Um, please don't spam though, Ismail. It gets a, a bit annoying for everyone else. Um, am I the only one who absolutely loves rival fans giving a shit? Yes, it's a load of crap, but I think it shows uh, shows us how much we've improved and that people are scared of us. So you're right, George. And rival fans saying it, I don't really mind. I, I'm not like rival fans can say what they want. Like it is what it is. What annoys me is the people that are meant to be journalists, the people that are meant to be pundits. The pe because otherwise you just get no good coverage of like where are you meant to go to get good coverage of Arsenal other than the Rory Talks Football YouTube channel? Um, no, no, I jest, I jest. There are multiple good YouTube channels, but you just don't see it on TV. We had Theo Walcott. We had Theo Walcott, which was refreshing actually. Um, but other than that. Yeah, it's just frustrating. It's frustrating. Like, I want to watch that coverage, and I want to see them talking about how well Arsenal did to go to the Etihad and completely control them. But we just don't get it. It's a compliment. Uh, they think we are too good to park the bus. But we did it. Yeah, I agree. But we didn't even park the bus. That's the staggering thing. We didn't park the bus. We gave them possession, but a lot of that possession was in the middle third. It wasn't. We weren't camped out in our own box, defending our middle, th uh, defending our final third relentlessly um so it, it wasn't park the bus football uh, and, and actually quite a few times we won the ball in their own final third so uh did you see stat muse's tweet about Saka's performance not mentioning Foden being pretty much just as bad yeah well again but this is where it's just agenda ridden Phil Foden arguably had a worse game than Bukayo Saka because Bukayo Saka had to do a lot more defensive work Phil Foden got hooked after an hour um but no one mentions it. Uh, no one mentions it at all. No one mentions the fact that Erling Haaland has had no shots on target against Arsenal this season. You know, it, it's it's bizarre. Had an hour-long debate with my mates who were saying Arsenal bottled it after saying yesterday we had no chance of getting anything at City. Double standards are unreal. Literally, at the start of the stream yesterday, especially on TikTok... Uh, by the way, shout out to those of you who watched the Watch Along on TIFO. Absolute legends. But I have I have TikTok up. I do the stream on TikTok. May, honestly, mainly so that I can I've got a recording of the reactions, so I can post them separately. And the TikTok chat before the game is just flooded with Arsenal are going to get smashed. It's going to be like last year, this, that, and the other. And then Arsenal don't get smashed, and so then they have to find a way of they can't acknowledge that they were wrong. Uh, they have to find a way of still making it negative about Arsenal. And all of a sudden, it's oh, Arsenal should have won. You know, Arsenal should have laid down the marker. Shouldn't City have laid down the marker? People have been saying for, at this point, three months, people have been saying, yeah, but City, once City get going, no one will stop them. And now they've gone to Liverpool and drawn, and they've played Arsenal at home and drawn. The two opportunities they had in the, the six-point games, they haven't won. Um, but no one talks about it. No one talks about it. There's moving the goalposts, and then there's whatever this is. Yeah, this isn't moving the goalposts. This is moving the entire pitch. This is this is unbelievable. This is they're moving the entire pitch and getting rid of the football and playing with the fucking I don't know what basketball. I thought KDB was poor as well yesterday, but yeah, exactly. L listen, don't get me wrong. I don't even think Erdegaard had one of his better games. I think off the ball he was good. On the ball, I think he has had better games. But the the abuse I was getting for daring to suggest that Erdegaard on form had been better than Kevin De Bruyne, the abuse was unbelievable. Absolutely unbelievable. And then De Bruyne has an awful game. I think he took he, he made 16 crosses and four of them landed on a city head. Um, but no one mentions it. No one mentions it. Maybe Lewis Bowden is right about Haaland. I should listen to him more often, JK. He's not right, but he's also not completely wrong. He's not completely wrong. Um, you know, Haaland hasn't turned up in the big games. Six against, <clears throat> against the top five this season, Haaland's played six games, scored one goal and assisted one goal. Four of those games he's blanked in. You know, there is an argument that he stat pads against smaller clubs. The wingers yesterday struggled going forward, but it was hard for them to, with basically no support up there, defensively top-class Jesus, especially Kivio. Uh, Cos Kivio got done first 10, and Jesus really helped. Yeah, exactly. And again, and Walcott said this in the in the analysis after the game. He was like, you know, if, if you're one of the wingers and you're, you're, you're having to work so hard defensively, and then eventually when you do get the ball, you're in your own half. Like, it's very difficult to do anything with it. 
Um, 0.34 XG for Haaland in three games against us. I actually think it's 0.24. I think. I think I say I saw that same stat earlier. It's 0.24. It's unbelievable. Uh, Mr. Mister says it's sour grapes. City fans now realize this might not be their year. It'll either be us or Liverpool this year. Possibly. I mean, the thing is, for them to catch up Liverpool, especially given the goal difference, they need Liverpool to drop four points, which means they need Liverpool to, to throw two games rather than one. Um, and on the back of that, City then have to go and win every game themselves. It's going to be tough for them. But like I said, they've had the opportunities. They played a massively weakened uh, Liverpool team at Anfield and got outplayed. And again, no one really mentions that. People talk about Arsenal and the way we played at the Etihad. They don't mention the fact that a few weeks ago, City went to Liverpool, who had a massively weakened team and got outplayed. Don't mention it. Amazing how Rodri was City's best player yesterday, considering how Arsenal parked the bus. Yeah. Yeah. A defensive midfielder being the best player in a game that supposedly Arsenal were camped in their own box. Do you think Saka was injured or just came off because of fatigue? I think I think it's part of the same problem. I, I think his, his injury is a fatigue-based injury, I think. Um, opinion on the Thomas Partey cameo yesterday. It was a bit of a mixed bag. There was one point where he got absolutely burned by De Bruyne. And I was like, oh my God, Thomas Partey has really lost his, um, his power and pace. Not that he's always, not, you know, he's never been rapid, but he always had all right recovery pace. Um, but on the ball, the vertical passing, splitting the lines something that we've clearly missed and it's just an ability that he's really he's the only midfielder in the squad maybe Erdegaard when he plays from deeper but Partey's the only midfielder in the squad that has that ability um and it's quite clear don't get me wrong I thought Jorginho had a decent game some people don't think Jorginho played well I think he did but um but yeah you could you could see what Partey can offer us you got so much stick for that combined 11 on that City fans video. I know, right? I would argue Havertz had more of an impact on the game yesterday than Haaland did. You know? I, I And I, I kind of jokingly put uh, Havertz in above Haaland in that video. But I don't think I was massively wrong. I don't. I thought Partey was pretty solid in such a big game with very little match fitness. He's got to start Wednesday. He does have to start Wednesday, yeah. Um... Can we talk about the ref? Well, do you know what? I don't think the ref was too bad. You know me. I'll get on a ref. I'll get on a ref if I really think they've they've been bad. But yeah, there were a couple of decisions that went against us, which I thought were harsh. There, the booking to Jesus, I thought was a bit of a joke. But in general, he benefited from the fact that there were no big controversial decision, decisions to make, right? There wasn't a single big call for him to make. But in general, I thought he let the play flow by not giving bookings. And he didn't, he could have given, you know, there were bookings he could have given to us. I thought Declan Rice could have been booked. He didn't give it. And I thought there were players for them that could have been booked. So overall, like, I don't think it was too bad. I don't think it was too bad. Um, the hate sacker is getting compared to Foden. It's just low-key racism. Uh, maybe. For, for, for some people, definitely. Uh, Magnus, no worries. It's good to see you. I'll get on a ref. <laughs> Careful people will clip that. Yeah, not, not like that. Not like that. Um, the ref was excellent yesterday. Have you got a ticket for Luton yet? No, I actually need to get a ticket for Luton. Um, that kind of has sprung up on me, but yeah, I do need to get a ticket for Luton. I had like, I sat on the exchange briefly today, but, um, Anthony Taylor had no big decision to make. So his shitness was not shown. Yeah. If he'd had a big decision to make, it would have gone for Man City, I would assume, but had mates saying Saka's washed. So I say he ha said he's had uh, 38, 33 goal and assists in all competitions this season. If anything, that shows how high his ceiling can be. But no, they just all call him a pen merchant. Yeah, they'll call him a pen merchant, but then they'll talk about how amazing Cole Palmer's been, despite the fact that Cole Palmer's needed, uh, scored more penalties. Um, team for Luton, I'd go same team, but with Tommy, Zinni, Partey, Trossard, and Elson all to start. It's not really the same. <laughs> I'd, go the, I'd go the same team, but I'd change half the team. Um, but no, I don't think you're, I don't think you're far off it to be fair. I think, uh, I think rest Gabriel. I think, I think Kivior left centre back, Tommy Asu left back. Now nah, probably Zinni left back. Maybe, uh, maybe we could rest Saliba for this game. I don't know. I, I need to think about it. Tomorrow's, tomorrow's live stream will be the, uh, will be the Luton preview. Adam, no worries. Good to see you. 
yeah, tomorrow's live tomorrow's live stream will be the main preview for it. Um, put in the kids to bed again. Going back to the start to rewatch. Bradley, you're a legend. You are a legend. I couldn't be both. Uh, I couldn't be both typing all that. Yeah. Now, when Palmer has the same amount of gold as Sister Saka, they start talking. Um, they start talking. Yet half his involvement to penalties. Yeah, exactly. Hi, hi. Good to see. You. Watch your video about Ten Hag. I'm so glad we have our te- Mikel. Yeah, Ten Hag. Ten Hag is is. Hit Ten Hag and Pochettino when they lose games are awful, like legitimately awful. Um, I don't think Arteta will rest anyone other than Saka and Jorginho. I think he will. I think he will. And the reason I think he will is that I don't think he'll even consider it resting players. But the likes, and we saw it with Thomas Partey, right? The same applies to Zinchenko and Tomiyasu. They need to start playing games to start building up their their. Fit, a their match fitness, B their match sharpness. Like these are players who haven't played a, in a in a proper level game in months. And if Kivior were to actually get injured and one of them had to come back in, you know, you'd rather he's got the Luton game under his belt. So I, I think I think they should start coming back in. Um, more more to do with getting them sharp than resting other players. I think Zinchenko is definitely a player that can play against Luton, that's for sure. And you could then put Tommy Asso as centre-back, potentially. Um, Rory on stream, you need to do the full-prem predictions where you go through every game and put the score in, and then it shows the table. If there's a website for that, let me know. If there's an easy website for me to use that, let me know. Um, I'm pretty sure, so far, I did my Premier League predictions for... I predicted every game that Arsenal, Liverpool and City had left when there were 13 games to go. We've played four of them now, and I got every single one correct, apart from I had City to beat Arsenal, and we've drawn. So actually, from the video that I made, the only I had Liverpool to win all of them. The only change that has happened is that Arsenal have picked up a point that I didn't think we would, and City have dropped two points that I didn't think they would, So, or I didn't predict they would. Does anyone have any information on Timber when he will be back? No, nah, not yet. I'm 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 growing I'm growing slightly concerned about Timber. No one's asked about him in press conferences and it can be a thing where the press are told beforehand not to ask a question about something. We've not really seen much of him in any of the training sessions either. And I feel like I'm just beginning to get a bit nervous that he might have had a setback. Who's your favorite Arsenal player this season? Uh, I think probably, like, Gabriel is well up there, but I think probably Declan Rice. Why is everyone underestimating Luton? Liverpool drew against Luton in the start because they were a bit too confident. I'm I'm not underestimating Luton, but th- if you look at our remaining fixtures, this is the only chance we have to even come close to resting. Like, we can't, we have to take it seriously, and the players that start really have to take it seriously. But after this, there is no there there is not really a game to rest anyone. Brighton away, you can't rest players. Bayern Munich, then it's uh, Villa, then it's Bayern Munich again, then it's Wolves away, then it's Chelsea. Like we just don't have the we don't have the easy games left to rest players. We saw Timber in a training session at the end of February with the team, but he's not been seen since. Maybe he's had a setback. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. I, I I'm a bit concerned. We didn't see him at all over the international break doing any training. We know Partey and Tommy Asu both played in the behind closed doors friendly. Timber wasn't involved. Outside of Arsenal fans, it's crazy how underrated Big Gabby is. I think he's top five centre backs in the world. Maybe our best signing value wise under Arteta. I mean, the fact that we got Saliba and Gabriel combined for 57 million is unbelievable like unbelievable um but you're right i thought yesterday gabriel was more deserving of man on the match yesterday than saliba in my opinion i thought gabriel was more important um i thought he bullied harland and i thought actually saliba was just a little bit uh a little bit dicey on the ball again um and i understand why saliba gets man of the match and gets the plaudits more because he's he's more aesthetically pleasing because he covers and he's got pace. But honestly, Gabby was so important yesterday. Got to assume Timber doesn't play uh, until after Chelsea at the very very earliest. Yeah, I'm not expecting to see him for a while now, unfortunately. The City game has given me more confidence that we can go to the Allianz Arena and the Bernabeu and not lose. Well, I was thinking this. 
if we get past Bayern, if we get past Bayern and then we have City, we've literally proven this season that over two legs we can beat them because we beat them at home and we drew away. Like, we can beat anyone. We can, especially over two legs. Um, I reckon t- uh, I reckon Timber has a small nick in the other knee, seeing it's, it's common during the rehab process. Yeah, possibly. Quite a lot of things can happen. Like, you haven't used the muscles properly for so long. It's pretty common to see small muscle injuries or, yeah, like stress on the other knee because you've been using it so much. Um, just hopefully it's not significant. But I'm honestly preparing to not really see Timber until next season. Like, we might see him between now and the end of the season, but I'm honestly preparing to just, you know, maybe we see a little bit of him, but he properly recovers over the summer and we see him next year or next season. Gabby should be our captain. No hate, Erdegaard. Yeah, but no, he shouldn't. He shouldn't because he's, uh, and this, like, it's a small thing, but in my opinion, it's significant. Gabby's English is still really not very good. Um, and even small things like talking to the referee during the game, it, it requires someone whose English is quite good. Um, I th- I th- the thing is, like, you can be a, a leader within the group without necessarily having to wear the captain's armband. I think we need to rest Saka and Gabriel, though I do think we need to put four or five past Luton to get back to pre-international break. Goal-scoring momentum. Yeah, I mean, we're at the point now where, honestly, just three points is all that we need, but... Gabby's English isn't great? Yeah, no, it's not great. I know you said you would rather play Real than City because they aren't as good, but at the same time, we know how to beat City, whereas Real is an unknown experience for our players. Yeah, but I think if we played the exact same way that we do against City, against Real Madrid, we'd beat them more easily than we can beat City. Because it's if you look at if you look at Real Madrid in transitions, if you watch the way RB Leipzig played against City, uh, played against Real Madrid in transitions... I think they're far easier to counterattack than City are. And I think we defensively, we can do the exact same job. Um, so I, I would still rather play. I would still rather play uh, Real Madrid. Um, did you see Dalman, 14 years old, and gets four assists in an under-18 game, and Obi Martin, four goals in the same game? It's beautiful for the future. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. That Dalman kid, 14 years old. It's pretty mad. 14 and they're cooking in the under-18s. Uh, we could bully Madrid a bit since they aren't as physically imposing. Yeah, we could do. We could do. Which title is more likely, UCL or League? I don't know. It's tight. It is tight because on one hand, we're only seven games away from winning the Champions. Uh, no, we're only five games away from winning the Champions League. And it's completely in our hands. Whereas with the Premier League, we could win the remaining nine games and still not win it. But obviously, the Champions League, you've got to put, you know, you've got to beat Bayern, and then you've got to beat either Real Madrid or City. So, I don't know. We'll see. Did you see Militao's coming back? Why can't Timber? Uh, because it doesn't always work like that. It doesn't always work like that. Tyrone Mings has been out for, or by the time Tyrone Mings comes back, he'll have been out for way longer. You know, it's it's people recover it. I don't know exactly when Militao got his ACL injury, but you know, it recovery time recovery time's completely different for different players. Um, anyway, I need to start moving because we do actually, at 7.15, I'm jumping over to the uh, football terrace. There is some news. There's some transfer news today, which is quite interesting. So um, the first bit came from Craig Hope in the Daily Mail. He said, Alexander Isaac is attracting interest from Arsenal, among others. So nothing specifically detailed there, but Isaac's definitely on Arsenal's radar still, which makes sense. Fabrizio Romano said, understand Martin Zubamendi remains on Arsenal's list. Uh, and he was on top of Bayern's list in the case that Xabi Alonso was going to become their new coach. Bayern still appreciates Zubamendi as one of their targets, but a final decision will be up to the next manager. So, uh, yeah, Fabrizio name-checking that Zubamendi is still on our radar. Um, and then Fabrizio also said, my understanding remains Arsenal have not opened concrete talks for any striker yet. As I said many times, Victor Gierkeres for sure is one of the options in the list as they have spent months in attendance with their scouts in Portugal to follow the Sweden international's progress. Still, at the moment, there are no talks or concrete negotiations as Arsenal wants to take their time before deciding who's the player they will sign up front. Um, but again, Fabrizio, name-checking Victor Gierkeres. 
Please smoke them on the terrace today. Yeah, they might have moved on past the Arsenal City talk by the time I get onto the uh, terrace today, but just checking. Uh, the Gearcrest train is still rumbling on. Yeah, we're full steam ahead. We're still full steam ahead. Absolutely. And uh, Fabrizio is beginning to talk about him more and more, which is good. It is good. Happy to see our Swedish guys getting recognition. Yeah, I think we end up with one of them. I do think we end up with one of them. Um, Love the mutual respect between Gabby and Haaland, though I think Haaland was a bit arrogant. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure Pep basically told Haaland, "Yeah, you need to you need to show Gabby a bit of respect because he's absolutely bullied you here." Do you and George have beef? I don't think so. I don't have beef with anyone on the on the football terrace, not at all. I don't care who we sign. I trust Arteta and Edu, talent spotter. Yeah, same, same. Do you think we need a more pacey player in the summer to help with counters? Absolutely. Absolutely. I think I honestly think if there's one thing we've learned this season, it's that we need another rapid player, like rapid pace uh, for those counterattacks. Because we were crying out for Martinelli all game, realistically. And I don't think we would have been as defensive or as deep if Martinelli was playing. Because if Martinelli's playing, he can stand high and wide and City cannot suffocate us as much because the right back, a Kanji or whoever, cannot commit as far forwards if they know that Martinelli is there waiting. When it's Jesus or it's Trossard, that's not really as much of a threat on the break. Um, and there are, there are, look, there are lots of players, you know, we've spoken about potential options, Pedro Neto, Nico Williams, Johan Bakayoko. Um, there are plenty of players. Would you take Mudrick for that pace option? Like, it's an interesting one because he definitely has the pace. It's just whether he's got everything else. I would... If you could get Mudrick for cheap, I wouldn't say no. I w I'd be interested in it. Because, they're, like, under Arteta, and it's tricky because there are still parts of his game where I'm like, this guy is so raw. For, and for his age, he's way raw, like, way more raw than he should be for his age. But then... You know, Arteta wanted him first time round. And, and, you know, I trust that Arteta had a reason and knew why he wanted him. This is why Neto is a must. If only his hamstrings weren't made of spaghetti. Yeah, Neto's injuries are the end. Just, it's brutal. It's brutal. But then, to be fair, with with a lot of those rapid sort of players, they have those sorts of injuries. Uh, he definitely has a lot more. Kudus, I mean, oh, God. Remember last summer? Remember last summer how how much I banged on about getting Kudus after we got Timber. God, what could have been? Imagine Kudus in our team. He'd have cooked. Chelsea aren't going to sell anyone. Uh, they have signed recently. They have enough academy graduates that they can sell to help with FFP issues if they truly have them. True. You're probably right. Kudus is my dream, to be honest. Every time West Ham play, I watch him like a hawk. Yeah, he's too good. He's too good. You want to kudos so about? I did. I did. My talent ID. My talent ID. Uh, allegedly, Timber has suffered another cruciate injury and will be out for another couple of months. I don't know about that. I don't know about that. I've not seen that anywhere. Um, if we, if we, ha yeah, if we've got kudos, we couldn't afford right. Yeah, but I was talking about it as well. After once, once we'd got Timber, I wanted one more signing and I wanted it to be kudos, but we clearly had no money. April Fools. Yeah, I assume I assume so. I assume so. Um thoughts on Ipswich Town maybe promoting because they are playing good football. Well, Ipswich are playing right now, aren't they? What's the score? Ipswich are playing now. Um They're drawing two all with Southampton. That's a massive game, that is. Uh see you on the terrace. I will see you on the terrace. Um anyway, it is time for Guess the Guna, the game where I give you five clues about an ex or current Arsenal player. And you have to guess who that player is in the chat. First person to get it right wins the immense pride and respect of the Rory Talks Football community. So get your fingers on your keyboards uh, and I will be getting into it um, starting now. Um, the Football Terrace is live. Yeah, I'll be jumping over there in 10 minutes. Clue number one. This player has won both the Champions League and the Premier League. They've won both the Champions League and the Premier League. Clue number two, they made their Premier League debut in 2011. They made their Premier League debut in 2011. Clue number three, they are 36 years old. 
Clue number three, they are 36 years old. Clue number four, they've played 73 games for Arsenal, scoring four goals in the process. They played 73 games for Arsenal, scoring four goals in the process. And clue number five, they currently play for Flamengo. They currently play for Flamengo. I don't think anyone's got it right yet. Lots of guesses. Guesses of um, Jorginho and Cole and Henri and Fabregas, Ozil. Fabregas, Giroud, Giroud, ba no, Bale's never played for Arsenal. This is Guess Laguna. They have to have played for Arsenal, just to make that clear. Not Czech, not Nabry. Um, and there we go. The first person to get it right is Draka. It was David Luiz. David Luiz. Tom got it second. George Christodoulou third. Ian Smith fourth. And Alex Suter in fifth. So there you go. It was David Luiz. It was David Luiz. Um, again, made it a little bit tougher. Made it a little bit tougher with the clues. First four clues were very hard. They were. They were. Intentionally. Intentionally. You know? I've got I've got so I've got so much respect for the knowledge of people in this chat that I've had to start making it harder. I've had to start making it harder. Uh Young Young Tar thinks he was first. I'll go back and check. Um, young ta, young ta. On mine, the only thing you said was uh, you said Zinchenko, you said Jesus. You didn't say it on mine. You said Zinchenko, then you said uh, Jesus, and then you said Sanya, and then you said, yeah, that was it. Eventually, you said Louis. You said that in sixth, unfortunately, young Tom. You were in sixth. You were in sixth. Um, it was definitely Drakkar that won it. To be fair, Kudus getting told to fuck off from the ball boy at Newcastle was jokes. Yeah, it was. It was. I, I just love the idea that he thought the ball boy would get up and move for him. It was, uh, it was quite sensational. Sixth on mine? Yeah, he was definitely sixth. VAR check complete. You know, I panic these days because I have had a couple of blunders. I do panic these days, but uh, not today. Not today. Um, anyway, anyway, it's time for Guess the Non-Gooner. Guess the Non-Gooner. I will give you the entire career path of a player who does not and has not played for Arsenal, and you have to get, uh, guess who gets it first. Honestly, your Wi-Fi robs me. Your Wi-Fi robs you. Don't, don't come at my Wi-Fi. Don't come at my Wi-Fi. Um, all right, this player started their career at Fluminense. They started their career at Fluminense. They went to Watford. They went to Everton. And they went to Tottenham Hotspur. Fluminense, Watford, Everton, Tottenham Hotspur. Bam, 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 bam. And there we go, Ian Smith. Ian Smith gets it first. It was indeed the pigeon, Richarlison. Uh, so congratulations to Ian Smith. In second was VV Vlad. In third was Tom. Fourth was George Christodoulou. And fifth was Sam Shapiro. So there you go. Congratulations. It was... <laughs> can't even bring myself to type his name. There you go. It was Richarlison. It was Richarlison. Um, look, we got five more minutes, five more minutes, and then I'm going to jump over to the football terrace. So if you've got any other any other questions, um, do let me know. By the way, I thought Ben White was brilliant yesterday. He's gone under the radar because of the job that Saliba and Gabriel did. But I thought Ben White was really good yesterday. Um, and he was kind of the only attacking threat that we had, or he provided a lot more attacking threat than... Um, Provided a lot more attacking threat than Kivior did. Uh, Aaron and Wilsey have both joined. Good to see you both. I hope you're doing well. Um, we're not far off from ending the stream, but I am going to jump over to the Football Terrace straight after. So I will see you there if you want to join. What's your toughest remaining PL fixture? Uh, our toughest remaining PL fixture? I think Spurs away. Yeah, it's Spurs away. The, the toughest remaining fixture is Spurs away 
Be- because apart from anything else, the the two toughest remaining fixtures on paper are Villa and Spurs in terms of the quality of the teams, right? Villa is at home, Spurs is away, and Spurs the, the comes right after it comes right in the middle of an absolute hellish run of um Champions League games and stuff. And they've got a 15 day break. So yeah, it's definitely it's definitely gonna be uh it's definitely going to be the hardest game for me. Uh, you mentioned Emma Hayes being an utter dickhead. Yeah, Emma Hayes is a knob. Emma Hayes is a knob. Um, yeah, she 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 had the audacity to call uh, what's his name aggressive when she was the one that literally went and pushed him at the end of the game. It was embarrassing. Ben White provided a huge outlet in the first half. Yeah, he did massively, and he completely locked up Phil Foden. Completely locked up locked up Phil Foden. Uh, I think everyone played well yesterday. Some could have played better, but everyone was a seven plus in my opinion. Yeah, probably. I, I was mainly, yeah, I'd fall. I'd have all. Um, I was probably a little bit harsh on Saka and Gabriel Jesus when I did my player ratings, I think, yesterday because I gave them sixes, but they did such a good job defensively that I might have been a bit harsh about that, Jonas. Uh, Emma Hayes is the Chelsea women's manager. So yesterday, Arsenal women beat Chelsea women in the Conti Cup final, right? And... There was a bit of there was a bit of commotion on the touchline at one point. Jonas, the Arsenal manager, shouted something at one of the Chelsea players who reacted to it. But yeah, at the end of the game, when they went to shake hands, Emma Hayes, the Chelsea manager, literally like shoved him. Um, and it's like if he had shoved her, I genuinely, if he had shoved her, he'd have probably been getting forced to resign today. Um, but the other way around, it's absolutely fine. How nice was it to see a full bench yesterday? The first time all season we've had a fully fit squad by Tim. But yeah, the bench looks so much stronger now. And and when you look at the subs that are coming on, you know, you look at the subs that came on yesterday, Trossard, Martinelli, Tomiyasu, Partey, you're like, this is solid. This is properly solid. Any update on the Arsenal player who collapsed yesterday? The only update I heard was that she was um, she was fine. She'd woken up. She was alert. She was talking. So I think she's fine. Has Gambi been better than VVD this season? Uh, yeah, I think so, yeah. I think so. Aaron with the $5 super chat. What a legend. He says, we did sit back, but we had our chances to score and we didn't put them away. That's my only criticism. Exactly. Exactly. We sat back. You know, we absorbed the pressure. There wasn't even much pressure, but we sat back. We knew that those opportunities would come. And like you said, the only criticism is that we didn't take a couple of those good opportunities. The two the two big ones that we had, Jesus needs to do better and Trossard needs to do better. It's unfortunate, but that's the way it goes. Um, but thank you, Aaron, massively for the $5. It, uh, it means a lot. Would you take Silva in the summer since he twisted Kivior all game? Uh, yeah, I mean, Bernardo Silva is an unbelievable player to have in the squad, yeah. 100% I'd take him. I don't think he'd go to us. I don't think he'd go to us at all. But I would definitely take him. Um, isn't Aaron the guy who spammed super chats during the summer? Uh, Aaron was here in the summer, yeah. He was uh, he kept the stream afloat in the summer, definitely. He's uh, he's a long time OG of this channel. That cross our ball should have been squared in the 85th. Nelly would have won it. Yeah, I mean it was it was a more difficult ball, I think, than people think because he'd have had to. There was a covering that there was a defender here, so he would have had to like whip it around the front foot of the defender but then have it fall into my tunnel. Like, it wasn't an easy pass, but he didn't even see it. And I think that's the problem, was that he should have seen it, um, which was a shame. Anyway, look, that is going to be the end of the live stream. I massively appreciate all of you for joining, as always. If you could subscribe, if you're not subscribed already, um, smash a like on the video before you jump off. It does massively help if you just leave a like before you go. I'm going straight over to the Football Terrace channel. Um, I'll be on there for the next 45 minutes, so I will catch you over there. And I'll be back half six tomorrow night Luton preview will be there. You'll be there, hopefully. Until then, have a good evening and good night.